Alright guys, Hatch Crow back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Three more teams will be eliminated for Major 4 today, but if you thought Las Vegas Legion's choke was banned yesterday against the Mutineers, Surge tried to go one better against the Minnesota Rocker last night, especially the manner in which they lost. Pred dropped 221 kills on the day to go out of the tawny top eight. Is it time for them to finally make a roster change, especially with one of these rounds we're going to discuss? Very much enjoy it here. Your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. So much to get into here. Scrappy, of course, and Co. They took down Boston. He says, shout out local area network. So he reckons he's coming different on LAN. Of course, kind of funny in a way, because Ultra not long ago, everyone said they're on liners, but uh, maybe a different story going forward. Quick note on RSTs as well. I know that during the flank last night, people were saying that there was a tweet that RSTs did. I don't exactly know what was tweeted. I didn't really see it anywhere. It has been noted, though, that he doesn't have Los Angeles Gullers in his bio anymore. I don't know if it was here previously, but, um, you know, people were saying that it was so not exactly sure on that one still got it in his head though but you can understand the frustration from his side also on Boston wanted to quickly mention what they might do because they came top 12 here now in fairness to Boston last major they beat optic round one a very poor optic in the first round it's got to be said that secured them top six then optic ended up beating them later in the tourney and um, to knock them out of course but they did beat Vegas on that run so last tourney they beat optic once and Vegas Boston they went two and two and they secured themselves top four Whereas Whereas this tourney, they lost to the same two teams they lost to before. Like last time, they lost to Ultra and Winners and Optic and Losers. This time, they lost to Optic and Winners and Ultra and Losers. But still, they lost to the same two teams, Optic and Toronto. And uh, that last time, they came top four. This time, they've come top 12. So it's kind of a difficult one. I think they have taken a step back, as Den says. I still respect the move and the intention from Boston to try and get better and bring in Krem. But you can understand, looking at way Krem plays, why they might have thought this is a good idea. Obviously, their results have gone backwards. They've got to figure out what they do there going forward. Because let's be honest here, Vegas might well be, they're not out of the World Championship race technically yet, but actually, Minnesota are closing in a fair bit on Boston, and Denz even says, have a lot of work to do to secure champs. Because if Boston fall off a cliff now, Vegas might be able to catch them, even if they can't catch Rocker. So that's one storyline to keep your eyes on here. Also though, we've got to discuss some drama at London. As Seam says, got absolutely choked slam 3-0, we keep it pushing, which I thought was, you know, it's a funny tweet in a way, it's unfortunate for a Seam. But what I will say is about this some scraps. I thought in fairness this tweet was going to be deleted by the time I woke up this morning, but it wasn't. Haven't been a team whatsoever for weeks on end. Been fighting the biggest uphill battle for months versus each other, not listening or respecting each other. No accountability, just pointing fingers and spawning in trying to do it all. It's on all of us as players, not our coach or manager. They've been trying and trying, but we just don't want to be professionals and listen and spawn in together. No more escaping that. So, I mean, this is very interesting for multiple reasons. Reasons. I know that many people have been going in on Scraps here as a result of this, which I can also semi-understand because Scraps is calling this out publicly, but obviously he was part of this culture as well to a certain extent. He does take here some responsibility and some blame. Maybe he feels like changes are coming and therefore now he's talking about the problems internally, but it's very interesting to hear that the team wasn't either accountable to each other or to their results. They were pointing fingers at each other and obviously not getting on. Whether saying this publicly actually does anything to help that situation internally, I'm not so sure. Maybe roster changes are coming shortly, but this is the issue that London have when they bring in not exactly a random crop of players, but just the way their team has gone. Like Asim, Nasi, Scraps, and Yuli. It's a real mix of players and personalities. I feel bad for Yuli going into this absolute mess, to be honest. But, um, you know, with Zero being gone and Paul X in and Paul X out and all the drama they've gone through, it's like when you put together four, not random players and personalities, but when you just mash together four players players that you think should be good in the respective roles and try and make it work, you are going to get personality clashes and issues such as this. So I feel like they've been asking for it in a way, in part, maybe it is on the coaching staff to try to do a better job, but Scraps reckons it's on the players. So what does that mean going forward? Whether that means roster changes are coming, I don't know. Kind of pointless for London at this point because they're not going to achieve anything anyway, but this is why Parasite's idea of if you are going to be a bottom tier team in the CDL, picking up at least two or three players that have played with each other in the past on either a channel just team or a former pro team is maybe wiser than just you know going for rant and okay scraps and the team played together before and phase back in the day but still you can understand why there might be problems in that camp and even as he says tried a million times to get it dealt with by team management still rocking up spawning in and wasting each other's time so quite the same from scraps i don't know what the future of london is in terms of what roster they'll field going forwards but i think the same question could be asked of the seattle 
Surge. Last night, a huge series against Rocker, not just for Surge and Rocker, but also for Vegas. They really needed Surge to win this one to try and give them a chance of making champs. Now it's looking very much out of reach. But game one and two, Surge won both of them. And then the control, Bants went big in the control. I thought for sure watching it that one of those rounds, a couple of those rounds, went to Surge. But it was the attacks that got the job done. Really impressive. Like LSE, like people complain about it. But actually, from a fundamental competitive control point of view, that I think is the best map that we have, to be honest. It does create some pretty great moments. Minnesota win that one. They then win the Fortress Hardpoint, which is very surprising to me because Pred and Co are usually incredibly good at this map. But Cami, in fairness, since the roster change, has been playing better Cami. So I will say that, that with no attach on the team anymore, and with Fane playing that slightly faster flex role, Cami has definitely been more impactful. And that has been one advantage of this change. I'm still not a fan of this Rocker squad they've put together here, but they do seem to be getting some results now. Again, though, I do feel like this is more of a Surge choke than Rocker being particularly good. We saw Surge win game five, round 10 against Los Angeles Grillers. So it's not a massive surprise. But this, though, is the round in question here. And they talk about the trophy systems and the replies. I'll just share this clip here for you guys on the big screen for you guys to check it out. So Pred goes crazy. At this point, they're up 4-2. Pred gets one off the bomb. Pred made a ridiculous play here. And look, in fairness, even after this round, Pred was making some questionable plays. But you can understand after this round why he thought, you know what, I've got to absolutely do it all to try and get us over the line here. And you can't really blame Pred, I don't think, because he was winning them loads of rounds by himself, as he usually does here in Search and Destroy. So here we go. I'll play a few guys on screen, then we'll discuss it. Time to plant this bomb. Pred might be able just to be able to get inside and stop this from going down. He's looking for him as well, and he jumps straight in. Goes on one versus one. Mac will go straight for this with a timer ticking, surely. He's going to get it down. He's going to get it down. He's going to get it down. Mac's going to go for the reach out the same oh. angle. And so here we go. We find Mac in a one versus one situation. Pred kills the bomb planter and there is eight seconds on the clock at this point. Afro goes to plant the bomb and, uh, you know, he gets on it. Mac goes for the chal and he actually gets off the bomb here, I believe, because uh, the trophy system blows up next to him. So there was a trophy next to Afro. It blows up and Mac has a Semtex in hand right here. You guys can see in the bottom right hand corner, he's got this Semtex. You guys can't quite see it, but he got the picture from the full screen. So he's got a Semtex. All he's got to do, you would think, is throw the Semtex at the bomb. Like, this is a questionable situation. Do you chal? Do you not chal? Is the guy actually planting? Is he not? Because Afro could be faking it, right? Just to wait for Mac to chal and then pop up. It can be done. The safer play for Afro is to just try and get it down. So the argument is Mac should just chal him, right? It takes a little bit of time to get off the bomb. Afro, especially, look, there's no fans. There's no crowd. Like, uh, surely in this situation, you make the play that's a bit more ballsy, right? To make a play so s as scared as this is, I'm sure, especially given what Fred just did to actually make the 1v1, is, I'm sure, frustrating. So he shoots a couple of shots just to try and bait him out or something and then you can almost see his leg here and he's still shooting at a dead body like the dead body on the right hand side he's still got a semtex that he could throw he doesn't throw it and they plant the bomb afro gets the bomb down with like 0.5 on the clock mac really should have just gone for the chal like pred did get behind the kind of the table there and it should have been job done at this point mac obviously realizes he's messed up big time mac goes for the rechal in fairness mac did kind of bait him by running away he baited the sound cue but still he's challenging afro on a head glitch and afro just spins around and gets him so, I mean, man, what a disastrous play from Mac on an individual level. And they end up winning the series at game five, round 10. Surge don't win a round after that. And it's not exactly a surprise as to why. So, yeah, just terrible play. It's never short, right, as Major Maniac has once said, as Dashi says as well. And these were the overall numbers. Pred with a 1.3. But uh, it's that play from Mac that really will define this series in many people's eyes. Because just he made so many mistakes and then compounded them by going for the chal at the end against the guard the heck glitch. I couldn't believe it to be honest and even as Pred says biggest choke I've ever been a part of embarrassing stuff and look he's dropped a 1.3 on the series he dropped a 1.4 earlier in the day 200 plus kills on the day and even as Sip says GG's been a soldier right there so I mean man this is a tough one and even Stanley was laughing at this rocker reverse sweep now obviously what he meant was he was laughing at the kind of bad luck from the Vegas Legion side but um, obviously it's not bad luck from Vegas they just played terribly and lost but you can understand why Stanley's 
he's like, oh my god, I can't believe that uh, Surge choked that in that manner to effectively put champs maybe slightly out of reach for Vegas as it stands. And then, though, Pred replies and says, what's funny? So he obviously wasn't happy at all that uh, this had gone down. Eventually, this type of stuff got deleted here, and uh, there was some joke tweets. This was, wasn't actually real, right? But it's the LeBron reference here, which is pretty funny stuff. Maybe it's me. So, I mean, man, what a mess. I'm sure Pred was watching this thinking, why am I still teaming with this guy? Pred had 221 kills today. And in fairness, accuracy individually has been much better this stage. Yes, he got fried map four in the series, but he's been better generally. But again, when it comes to land, it is the Sib and Pred show to try and do anything on the map. And if they can't deliver it, I mean, look at Pred's numbers. A 1.24 this major. He's had very similar numbers all the majors so far. Ridiculous consistency from Pred from an SMG perspective. And they go home top eight. Like, it's absolutely absurd how this team just can't seem to deliver. And even Pred is replying to Scumfear looking maybe for some gas in the replies and he certainly gets it you were doing your thing so this is the thing right Pred is an absolutely undeniable talent there is no doubt about it whether Surge decide you know what screw this we're just going to run it out for the end of the year anyway because they haven't performed so far this season this I thought was the tourney for them to really put up or shut up in a way like last year they had a few similar placements and then they won an event at major three last season this was their chance to do something similar but it didn't happen and even though this team on their day can challenge the best they can beat any team I think in the league when they're playing at their best because that's the potential that Pred and Tib have but they can lose to bad teams like they get exposed sometimes their search and destroy isn't very good their control they somehow nearly lost that game against the Los Angeles Grillers so you know that's the issue for these guys when they play the teams they're expected to beat they can't do so on a consistent basis the question is do they need a change right Mac obviously made that terrible play I'm sure in the mind of his teammates right now they're thinking damn this guy and if there was anyone to change anyway Mac would have been the most likely we know how much they respect accuracy's leadership and accuracy's been better so if there was a change could it be for vivid i know that some people have been saying now whether boston would actually let go of vivid and that it'd be able to get a buyout to work i don't know but um you know a vivid partnership for pred could be pretty interesting he was a great partner for shotzi a few years ago on the dallas empire team towards the end of that season so big questions we know back in february there was a lot of thoughts about this team making a change and phoenix said no we're not making a change i make the calls here but the results have got to be getting to a point of being pretty much untenable. I do feel for Matt Christ because I'm sure he's looking at his phone right now and thinking like, Jesus, I'm getting absolutely cooked and it wasn't a great performance. I know that Sib and Mac get on very well and that's kind of one of the reasons why they've wanted to team together for so long, but it might have got to a point now where if they want to do anything with this roster, it might be time to make a change if they can actually find one. Even Gwyn, right? I know Parasite was mentioning his uh, SMG player on their bench right now, Search and Destroy Star. That might not have made that play. So, you know, the questions are going to be raised there and it might be time to try something and also at the end of the season this is I think the nail in the coffin for Pred staying on surge it was unlikely he was going to stay there anyway but it's almost guaranteed now he's going to be leaving and going somewhere else no matter what type of bag surge off him the last player to do this I guess in a superstar position was Octane he went to Thieves won a world championship whether Pred goes to Optic whether he goes to FaZe whether he goes to Thieves I don't really think it matters so much for Pred because he's going to have offers from at least two of those three teams I would say that don't win the world championship and there's going to be some of them now on the other side of the coin here you've got to feel bad for Vegas in a way got to hit the biggest regain of the history of regain says Tip where is she because they are almost out of it now I would say Boston at 160 Rocker at 150 now so this is based on the placement so far in the tourney Vegas 130 so they're a fair bit behind and Rocker still have a chance to extend that gap they'll play another series of course today and that'll be against either Optic or Subliner so a bang and day of matches today we've got FaZe versus Thieves Kraken game Trodzo versus Florida to see if Florida can somehow ruin another team's weekend, but I'd expect Optic to get through here. I'd expect, I don't know how to call these games, to be honest. Like, Optic versus New York could be really interesting because New York are very good in Columbus, but, you know, they beat a Vegas team that was terrible this weekend, so I'm going to say that Optic should be favoured here. I'll, I'll give it maybe a 3 one maybe a 3-2. I think that New York are going to put up a fight here, but I'll say a 3-1 to Optic. Thieves phase, super difficult to call, I think, but I think phase 3-2 is maybe marginally the safer prediction. Ultra should take down Mutineers, and then I guess as I've got it, I would have Toronto versus Thieves, which would be a banger, and then Rocker versus New York, which would be another very interesting one to determine which team gets to Championship Sunday. But very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.